Hey guys, uh, I know it's been a while. I had to kind of take a leave of absence for a minute. Um, uh, my best friend died, my best friend in the entire world. Um, she had liver disease, uh, she needed a transplant, but um, she ended up being too sick. Uh, so she wouldn't have survived the surgery anyway. Um, so yeah, that's why I've been gone for a while. I don't know how many of you care, but that's why. Um, and here we go, on with the video. Buckle up, buttercups, because boy have I got a story for you today. Uh, this book is only on tier 2 of the Disturbing Books Iceberg that I'm using, however I feel like it should be way further down. Um, this is the second book that I've read by Matt Shaw. The first one was uh, Sick Bastards, if you guys remember that one. Um, and honestly, I was more disturbed by this book than I was Sick Bastards, even though Sick Bastards is on the final tier of the entire iceberg. Um, I feel like there was just one main disturbing scene for me in Sick Bastards, um, whereas this book has continuous disturbing scenes. Um, however, I am someone that uh, could easily be triggered by um, firearms in a school setting, so if that is something that bothers you, you may want to skip this video. Also, for the sake of explaining this on YouTube, um, these are high school students. I am going to assume that they are all seniors in high school and they are all at least 18 or older. That's what we're going with. Our nameless protagonist is a high school student who moves around because of his dad's job. Uh, he has recently settled into his current high school and has even stayed long enough to make a friend this time. We start this day with our protagonist entering his classroom uh, and he proceeds to uh, produce a firearm and hold his entire class hostage. He turns his attention to a girl named Rebecca and he recalls the night when she invited him to a party and pretended to want to have sex with him. Uh, she brought him into her little sister's room, and just as the, our protagonist's uh, penis was exposed, uh, the main bully Pierce and all of his friends bust out from hiding spots and film the entire thing with their cell phones. This video then is sent around to the entire school. Our protagonist at gunpoint forces Rebecca to give him a blowjob in front of the entire class. That's the kind of book we're in for today. Once he finishes with Rebecca, he proceeds to call out a list of names. His friend, David, was included in this list. Uh, he explains that those were the kids that he deemed innocent and were invited to sit next to him out of the line of fire. We flash back to our protagonist's first day at school. Pierce and his friends were bullying David for being gay, and our protagonist stood up for him. Later that day, Pierce and his friends viciously beat up both our protagonist and David. Uh, they refused to tell the headmaster who did it, and that's when Rebecca approaches them and invites them to her party, saying that it was cool of them for not snitching on Pierce. Uh, David, knowing something was up, refused to go, but our protagonist wanted to believe the worst was over. Um, after the party that night, our protagonist would contemplate suicide. He then tries to make Pierce stand up, but Pierce calls his bluff. Uh, he is then pistol whipped, and our protagonist moves on to his next victims. He calls the teacher forward and asks if she remembers when David tried to report the group of kids for bullying. Uh, the teacher did not take it seriously. He forces Mrs. Price to pull down her skirt to demean and embarrass her just like she did to all of her other students. Uh, ben and Daniel are the next to be called forward. These two relentlessly tease David and our protagonist, calling them gay, calling them in love with each other, etc., all that kinds of stuff. Um, the protagonist tells the two that it's time to kiss and make up. 
um, it turns out Ben and Daniel were the main students to begin a rumor that our protagonist was can I, I don't know if I can say this word on YouTube everyone acts like we can't so uh, a pedophile pedophile um, so yeah they start that rumor um, claiming that the video sent around was just a shorter part of a longer video where he makes um, Rebecca's eight-year-old sister dance for him um, it got so the rumors got so bad that the police ended up being called in to investigate the matter the protagonist pulls out a phone and begins to film as he forces Ben and Daniel to make out with each other he then takes it a step further um, by forcing Ben to perform oral sex on Daniel. As they are doing that, our protagonist kicks Ben as hard as he can in the testicles, forcing him to bite down on Daniel's penis. He then leaves Daniel on the floor to bleed out. He turns his attention to a girl named Chloe, who bullied another girl for being fat. The bullying was so harsh that the girl ended up taking her own life. Uh, he forces Chloe to eat an entire slice of chocolate cake with dog poop in it. We then flash back to a happier time when our protagonist and David ditch school to go to the movies, um, only to have that day ruined by later on, Pierce and his friends, uh, they end up jumping David outside of his own house. Uh, this ends up being the final straw for David, uh, who also makes the decision to take his own life that night. Um, our protagonist then calls everyone a murderer. You're all murderers except for them, he says, as he gestures behind him to the spot where he told the innocent kids to sit. Uh, but there's no one there. It turns out the list of names he read off in the beginning was a list of students who had taken their own lives due to bullying. We flash back earlier that morning when his mother catches him trying to take his father's handgun, forcing our protagonist to shoot her. Um, forcing. At this point, Mrs. Price tries to take the gun from our protagonist, and after a short struggle, the gun goes off, killing Mrs. Price. Um, all the while, our protagonist insists that none of this is his fault and he was forced into this by all of them, Pierce in particular. The head teacher then enters the room and our protagonist points the gun at him. Tell me about David, our protagonist says. Um, the head teacher starts by saying that David was a confused young man, which causes our protagonist to shoot him. David wasn't confused, he says. He was a victim. He turns his full attention to Pierce now, forcing him to admit that everything that happened was all his fault. He tells Pierce to open his mouth as the police show up. Our protagonist puts one ear to Pierce's mouth and presses the gun to his other ear. He imagines David is there. David tells our protagonist that he loves him. Our protagonist finally realizes that he loves David too. He pulls the trigger and that's the end. Whew. So that was a book I read. Um, again, this book disturbed me a lot more than Sick Bastards, but that's just me. Um, I want to add that if you're watching this and you're feeling bullied or harassed, please, please reach out to someone. I promise there are more people out there who care uh, than you think. Um, also, if you see someone being bullied or harassed, please, please step up and say something. Um, it's not okay. And it's, as someone who was bullied for a really long time, it's a painful thing to have to go through with nobody, with feeling like nobody's on your side. Um, so yeah, everyone just be kind to each other, please. Let's just make this existence as painless as possible, please. Um, you don't need to go out of your way to be cruel to somebody else. Uh, anyway, that's all I've got for today. Um, thanks for sticking with me, uh, if you made it this far. And, yeah, if you're into this kind of thing, maybe subscribe. Uh, maybe check out some more videos. Um, 
I know that I saw Matt Shaw's name a bunch more times on this list, so uh, we'll be in for a treat later on down the road, I suppose. Anyway, uh, the end. Thanks. Bye.